<laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Verticality. All right, welcome to the straight red card. I'm battling through here just for you, just for you out there. Um, we're going to talk about Camp Cupcake. Yeah, 2.0. It's not really a Camp Cupcake either. Yeah, it's almost like um, training camp. It's just two days. We're running two days. It's like a camp national team. It's like a. <laughs> it can't be as big as a cupcake. It's more like camp cookie. You know, just getting a cookie. That's all we're. That's what we're doing well, here. I mean, nothing's coming. Nothing. We're we as fans aren't going to get anything out of this. There's no games. No games. No. So I mean, it, it was like, yeah, they got together. It's like, so th- them actually announcing the camp. All that does is tell us who might we, we can start narrowing it down who might get included with the January camp. That's about it. Because there's not they, like we have anything to judge us on. They didn't even bring enough players to do uh, you know 11, 11, on 11. 11 yeah. Oh, maybe Berhalter's gonna that? jump in. Maybe Berhalter and another assistant's gonna jump in. <laughs> Could be. I mean, otherwise I don't know. Goalkeeper understand coach, this. you know, he's the other goal. No, we have three we have three goalkeepers. We don't need a goalkeeper coach. Yeah, we're fine on goalkeeper, but I mean, I suppose Berhalter could play center back for one of the two teams, so he could be on the field yelling at them about how they're not doing what's right for his system. They'll just they'll just play some ten v nines and uh, it, it basically practice what happens if you know one team gets one red card and the other one gets two. I don't understand it. Why not just bring Alfredo Morales or Keaton Parks, some other defenders? I mean, fuck, put. Kessler in there if you want, but at least bring enough players that you can play eleven on eleven. Uh, unless Such they're just plan- unless they're going to plan on just running these guys to keep them fit the whole time and doing little drills and with with. I, wonder, I wonder if they're going to pull in some of like the local uh, colleges and play like just play some pickup games. They used to do that back in the old days, like the U.S. Men's National Team. I remember when they uh, back in the is it late. 80s or early 90s somewhere around there they went and played ucla and uh came out in the paper like the next day us 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 ucla defeats men's national team <laughs> you're like what coach what immediately makes a uh, coach medium makes roster changes <laughs> i remember eric quinall was saying i just want to be clear i did not play in that game <laughs> In some interview recently, can't remember what it was. He's like, I did not play in that game. It wasn't me. Was it with um, Tack? He was on Tack show recently. It was with Tack. That's right. Yeah. 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 So anyhow, before the show even started, Brett and I were just going through different pronunciations of teams. Because I'm awesome you know, at it. There's rumors. And, nope. you know, <laughs> no, we're, we're going to talk about it. The rumors. We can't yet. We, we know stuff. We're going to save it. So we can't tell you yet. It might expose one of our sources. So we can't go into that. But we were talked about Bayern München, uh, Mm -hmm. which is the real way Bayern München is pronounced in Germany. It's not Munich. That's something I think the English made up, right? It's in Bavaria. Um, (laughs) Don't have a brain tumor. Uh, No, he's Austrian. Austrian. Yes, he's Austrian. He's, he's not Austrian. from Strand. He's not from that region. And then we've got <laughs> Cologne. We've got Kern. Is how it's pronounced in Germany. And then we got Rapid Wien. I feel like, you, I feel like when you say Kern, I feel like you're almost mocking somebody when you say it like that. No, nah, that's just how it's pronounced there. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's it's Kern, Germany. <laughs> yes, it's K. It's actually in Germany. It is spelled K O L N, not Cologne. That's not how it's spelled. Same way. Not the same way at all. And then you can actually call Rapid Gene, which is an Austria of Rapid Vienna, if you wanted to. You really wanted to. I mean, if we're going to say Bayern Munich, why shouldn't you be allowed to say Rapid Vienna? Anyhow, all interesting things. And it brings me to the town I've been driving by for, you know, five years in my last job. And it's in Brown County, Indiana. And it's called, the name of the town is called Gnaw Bone. Like gnawing on a bone. Gnaw Bone. Nothing, nothing says backwater Indiana like Gnaw Bone. 
Well, yeah, I mean, especially <laughs> since the original name of the town was it was a French name, Narbonne. And I guess people just didn't like saying Narbonne. So they started saying Narbonne. And then they just officially, then they eventually officially changed the name of the town to Narbonne. Jesus, Narbonne is a much more pretty way to say the town name. It'd be, it'd be interesting to go back and find out when they actually changed the name. Like oh, even they, on the maps and stuff. Like, do you think it occurred during the World Wars when they, when uh, France surrendered? Like, what well, we can't have? I don't know. We can't have. We can't have our name French. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, us Hoosiers, we are notorious for screwing up French names. And uh, let me see here. <laughs> I'm a king. I'm the king of doing that. What are you talking about? Of course, I know what this. Is, the, it says the origin of the name Nawbone is obscure. One theory is the town's name derives from the original French settlement in the area, Narbonne, um, named in turn for the <laughs> southern French city of that name. To the ears of the English settlers at the time, however, Narbonne sounded like and became to be known as Nawbone. So, so if yeah. you were from... Anyhow, I believe from it, trust me. How do, how do you say that in French again? Narbonne. And if you were from there, what would you be called? Narbonian? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go for a nar Narboner. <laughs> Are you a Narboner? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we better get to this. All right. So a uh, little. This I'm wasn't sick. the show. <laughs> I'm sick, people. Okay. I have a, an ailment right now. So just deal with my drifting. So we're going to talk about this Camp Cupcake, and the reason we were able to bullshit that long about nothing is because there's really not a whole lot to talk about here, which don't doesn't mean you should stop watching the show because we're still going to have fun with this. But Join us again next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the people you expected from Greg. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> um, <laughs> not a single shocker on here. Um, and that's I, didn't even, not... I didn't even notice Ewell's included in this man. I didn't miss his name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. The, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you telling me that he couldn't include somebody else in the midfield? I'm not. I mean, this, we'll is, get... this is just a camp. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's yeah, move into we'll, this. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. I mean, you're right. You're so right. It's frustrating as fuck. Um, Sean Johnson. Sloanine, your your boy Slonina from Chicago Fire and, and Matt Turner are the goalkeepers. No surprises. I re not not a surprise, but I do like the fact that uh, Gabe is on here. But man, he's young, seventeen, oh, yeah. right? He's seventeen years old, and he's already he's already linked to uh, Manchester United. <laughs> eh, I'm not buying that either, though. I mean, it might be true, but if he goes there, he's just going to end up playing he's for the U. U23 team. Well, my, my point was he's, he's got like five professional games under his belt. I mean, maybe a few more than that, but uh, it's just it's one of those things, you know, a, a, a young starlet goalkeeper comes out and all of a sudden the, the standard uh, names start getting broadcasted, interested in so-and-so player. You know, you know how long it takes a goalkeeper to reach his peak? It's like 25 or 26 years old. He's got like seven years to go before he's the best goalkeeper that he can be. That's kind of a crazy way to look at it, uh, at it, but that's just generally how goalkeepers I hope he evolve. Some proof that'd be great. I mean, there's no guarantee, but um, you know, I don't think he's going to Man United. Anyhow, I don't want defenders. To. Huh? I want, to, I want him to stick it to Chicago for another year, at least. Maybe two. Stick Stick it to Chicago. No, act. Stick that. <laughs> I know, I know. Just fucking <laughs> around. Uh, defenders. George Bellow, left back. Not a shocker that he's here. Um, oh, by the way, for the goalkeepers, the guys that really have a chance to make the team, obviously, are Sean Johnson and Matt Turner. Yeah. Slunin is not going to be the third goalkeeper um, because, no, that's not going to happen once January uh, for um, qualifiers come around. So I guess we should probably clarify qualifiers. Um, who's going to make it off the up? And, and I do have to say... Oh, Go ahead. I do have to say there is some contention going around the uh, mm. the fandom as far as really how many players here are going to be in contention for the January camp, and some there are some people who are like two to three, and then some people are like like I had mentioned 
channeling my inner Burhalter, I calculated six to ten as a possibility. Not saying all ten would be included, but there's at least ten names on here that could find their way onto the January camp. And, we'll and that's that. that is when that's when you're you're you know you're you're mind melding with Burhalter, right? And it hurts. My my head hurts. I don't like it. Right. And just because Brett said there could be as many as six to ten doesn't mean that's what he would do. <laughs> yeah, I had to um, specify that too. <laughs> yeah, because you have to because it's not anything that either of us would agree with if that actually happened 10 would be out fucking rageous so that better not happen i think i think i sent you the list it's possible dude i'll have another hernia if that happens <laughs> all right massive fucking ball hernia all right george bello um yeah it's not surprising he's on this list i don't know if he deserves to be um on the uh january qualifiers though he's, he's I mean, still he's, contention for that left back spot so i don't see why he would not be included because you've got anthony robinson because you've got um the kid in um uh, belgium uh sam sam vines. vines i don't see bellow being necessary so you got well, two guess, of them. I guess we have, we have to specify here, though. This is just even even if he's not in contention in your mind for January window, he's still going to be included in this camp because yeah, no, that's players fine. that the, he needs players in the camp. Yeah, because we've got no other. It's not like an abundance <laughs> of fucking American left backs in MLS. So yeah, this is only bad. But when you got Scally who can play left as well. Mm -hmm. And you've already got Anthony Robinson. And you got Vines. Then no, Bello should not make the January. Given who we have on right, I don't. I don't even know if Vines is in contention for the most part. If Scally plays or if it is included, so well, you've got Dest. You've got Yedlin. I think those two guys are pretty locked in for the January window. Yeah. So Scally's just a guy that can play either left or right. Mm -hmm. So Sam Vines might be left off. It might be Robinson and Scally. And because Dust can do the left back thing too. So Bellow's not needed and Vines might not be needed, but I'm going to suspect there's going to be at least five of those guys. Yep. I was about to say it too. Yeah. Dewan Jones, it's nice to see him on here, but hey, what is he, 25, 24 years old at mm. this point? I'm not saying that that doesn't mean he can't get any better. It's just that I don't know. I just never saw him as. Um, Oh, having like a high ceiling so but i'm fine with him on here it's fine for him to be your camp cookie um rooks lennon yeah that's believable camp cookie sure aaron long we kind of noted noted that that was probably gonna happen anyhow that's well, two windows three windows i mean two world cup windows and the uh, camp cupcake is included yeah i don't so know he's got to be getting back into uh uh, form at least to start. Well, again, we don't have any games, so we can't see if he's going to see the field, but he's got to start begin, getting back up there soon. God, Burhalter must really, really like Aaron Long. That like, that really puts into question to come center back time whenever he is healthy. Let, let's say if he comes back 80%, let's say even say, let's say if it's a full 100% where he was before the injury. I mean, we're, we're looking at four to five, four. Maybe five if he stretches the roster out beyond twenty-five uh, come windows, but I mean, who who's gonna get who's gonna get replaced? Who's gonna get the yeah? Ass? Who are you gonna chop? You're not yeah. talking chopping Zimmerman. You're not chopping Robinson. You're probably bringing Kenzie. Um, Funny, I would have I would have probably have uh, looked at uh, McKenzie as being the one that gets chopped if if there's four. Well, I mean, if the all of what we've been talking about is absolutely 100% true. Brooks isn't coming back either. So maybe mm -hmm. it does make it more likely. Maybe that's why he's pushing so hard on Aaron Long. I don't know. I mean, we know there's something wrong with Brooks, the brooks Burhalter relationship. Um, that's not just a rumor anymore. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, could you bring CCV? I mean, he's been really good with Celtic, but... You know, I Miazga is definitely out of the seems to be way out of the picture. He's not only not playing at Alavis, there's the whole dog situation. <laughs> and I just think that I don't know. It I think that he could make the team in January. I think he could make it because I think when Burhalter says Aaron's name, he says Aaron 
long. That's what he <laughs> says. So I think they, they've got a really close relationship. <clears throat> uh, all right. Miles Robinson. Yeah. He better be on this cookie team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Walker Zimmerman. So yeah. just on the defenders here, who do you have come January as a possibility? Well, Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman, Aaron Long, I think are all distinct possibilities. Miles and Walker are locked in. Yeah, yeah. Robinson and Robinson and Zimmerman defin- definites will be there come January. Uh, Long will probably be included in the roster, not necessarily on the game day roster. They'll probably continue the pattern for the most part. Um, at this point, until he gets a match fitness, I can't see Berhalter utilizing him as an actual option, but he'll probably be included anyways. I mean, we're forgetting Richards. Richards will be on there too. Yeah. But it, so this could be Richards, Robinson, Long, and Zimmerman because, honestly, I don't know if things are going to get patched up or between Greg and Brooks. McKenzie has been playing, but they have a big, they've had a big long break because of the Rona. In Belgium, Mm. so not a lot of gank games being played. Not as long of a break as long, but still. Yeah, but, you know, Long's in camp, (laughs) and his name is Long. Um, And then, you know, Miazga doesn't play at Alvis, and, you know, Scottish teams aren't valued. So, by by Greg, even if it's Celtic, apparently. Sucks for Sands. Um, (laughs) It might suck for Sands. We'll get into his move to Rangers uh, here, but I'm also uh, chalking up as a possibility. I'm not saying that it'll happen, but it's one of the ten the ten possibilities is Bello, and I know we had talked about him possibly being played out due to Scally's inclusion and doing Divines, uh, with, obviously with Robinson there. But I mean, he's in contention. He's been there for like the last two or three windows. So. Yeah, but give me a good excuse as to why. I mean, I'm, I know I'm, I'm you're channeling Berhalter. You're channeling Greg right now. <laughs> but if you're Greg and I am me and I'm asking you a question and this is a press conference, I'm like, Greg, how the fuck can you possibly justify that? Excuse me for saying fuck on it on your YouTube channel. Oh. Is what I would Well, he's looked well, he would say he's, to the US soccer people, but I would say, <laughs> what's going on? Uh well, you know, I he, just he's don't looked, think he's looked happen. good in camp. And uh, you know, we're still trying to figure out who's behind uh and, you know, Jedi there is uh, the backup. As my Burhalter impersonation, was it any good? <laughs> I didn't notice you were doing one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't really put on much effort. <laughs> you asked you the question, get, and I was just you know, trying to. You have to get it really mellow to be Greg. You got to be like, well, oh, yeah, you know, it was pretty good in camp. Um, the thing, the thing with with George, the thing with George is he, he offers us <laughs> a lot of verticality, a lot of verticality, and that's not something everyone else can provide. So yeah, it also you know, <laughs> if Robinson so, stays healthy, you know, then yeah, you know, Bello has a shot, but I don't know. He, he's one of the ten. I'm not again. I'm not saying all ten will be there, but he's one of the ten. If Scally can play left back, and Scally doesn't make this next January window, I'm going to throw a fit. That's what, what if, I'm going to do. What if he makes a January window but doesn't play again? Yeah. Well, that's a big that's a big chance that he won't play because you've got Dest on the right and you've got Robinson on the left. We've got, and, we've got three games in six days. No, our, our backup left back's absolutely going to play. Well, then you play Scally and Yedlin on the backup game. That's not a bad backup lineup. It's not. Scally at left back, Yedlin at right back. Give Dest and... Um, uh, Robinson a blow. Oh, God damn it. I promise not to say that anymore. Um, <coughs> Aaron Long. All right. Um, <laughs> Way to throw move, that in there. <laughs> let's, let's move on to the midfielders. We knew Kellen Acosta was going to be on here. And yes, he's going to make the January yeah. qualifiers. Cole Bassett. Nice to see him on here. Don't think he's going to make the January qualifiers. Don't. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, your boy Mihailovic is on here too. Woot. It was nice to see. Yeah, but, um, he's not going to make January, but uh, good to see, and hopefully he's uh, in contention. Um, yeah. he, had, he had a hell of a season for Montreal after you know after he ditched. Uh, <laughs> he didn't ditch. Let's rephrase this. After he got uh, sold by Chicago, he finally became a uh, a solid player in MLS. I, I blame that all on Chicago. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, he did make a jump this season. Oh, he, more he, he, say he was killing it. Yeah, yeah, he was doing really well. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad to see him on here. I don't think he's going to make it. And I guess his trial at Bologna didn't work out real well. Or as we say here in the United States, Bologna. Bologna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bologna? That, that trial for Mihailovic in Bologna didn't work out. <laughs> Well, no, it, it didn't. Doesn't seem to have panned out. But maybe you know that's a precursor to things to come. Um, Legette's on here. He's going to more than likely make the January window. Like it or not, like the fact that he had a not a very mediocre season for LA Galaxy doesn't seem to matter. Um, the fact that. Hey, you know, he, his, his, career, his, career is, his career is going to be a resurgence at New England Revs now, so no worries. Well, Bruce does He's know how, Bruce does know him, him some legit, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. Christian Roldan had a really great season at Seattle, but he's not done yeah, anything is. whatsoever no. to eh. prove that he can replicate that for the United States men's national team outside of one great steal and pass that Pepe scored. Yep, or I, was I, I, it, I brought was that up Pepe? in a... It no, Pepe. it went to Pepe. Oh, it went to Pepe, and then it went to Aronson. Didn't Aronson finish yeah. that one? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I brought that up to him, like, because I was talking about him on Twitter today, and I was like, for the most part, I mean, I mean, uh, you can make the argument that he plays a role for Berhalter that, role that he needs or whatever, but quite frankly, he's performed nothing but mediocre games or slightly below mediocre games, and except for his, you know, one dispossess against Honduras that resulted mm -hmm. in a goal. Yep. His dispossess, his 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 cause for the dispossession, or whatever yep. you want to that. Right. But yeah. So I mean, yeah, hell of, hell of a good season for. And we had we had some Seattle fans come on and say that they were tired of hearing the. Well, he had a good season for uh, you know Seattle as far as his inclusion with the national team. Even 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 Seattle fans are starting to say, guys, we need to reel this back as far as including rule on. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that great of a season, yeah, especially yeah. at the end. And some people said. He might not even be the best rolled on on Seattle, although his brother just got um, let go. I would, I would argue he wasn't the best uh, rolled on in Kakiev right now. No, not so far. He, I mean, his brothers played a lot better for El Salvador. You, you said uh, you said the other rolled on got cut by uh, Seattle. Yes, his brother. <laughs> Sorry, sickness. <laughs> Um, and he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't re-signed. I don't know if they're still going to try to make uh, a deal with him, but ready for a lower salary, he was on the release list. Like Sounders released like seven players. You're like, Jesus Christ. It's like fucking, you know, 40% of the change. team, <laughs> including, um, you know, the center back or center forward guy. It's been there for a while. I forgot his name. Anyhow, well, uh, Will Bruin, um, I was going to bring him up, but I just assumed he wasn't there anymore. <laughs> yep. Now he's been injured quite a bit. Bring, I was going to bring it up as a joke, but ah, oh. yeah. And ooh, then ooh, ooh, Hoosiers. <laughs> That's right. He was a Hoosier. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Yule is I on. Wonder here. why he's on here. <laughs> There's no actual really good reason to have him on here. I mean, you could have brought if you're talking about just straight up MLS. You could have brought Alfredo Morales. You could have bring Keaton Parks. You could have brought in. Those two just MLSers for well, starters. I mean, I mean, we're, there are no games, so it's not like we're talking about positions because obviously the people you brought up aren't playing the same position that Yule plays. They could, I guess, but they don't. But there's no game, so why, why even include? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Just to you know? frustrate us, yeah, to piss us I mean, off. If, if you want to pull in other people that play his position, I mean, I would like to see Flack, Flack, Flack from uh, Union. I yeah, would name? be yeah. on flock. Yeah, flock been a good, uh, that's another great. I would love to have option. just seen him brought in. I mean, just we already know what we look. do with you. Come on. Yeah, did you watch San Jose last this season? <laughs> he was awful with them too, and now we're gonna just keep calling this just, guy up. <laughs> snuggle, San, snuggle, snuggle even San Jose nuts. fans agree with us on this too. Yeah, like why is he being included? <laughs> yeah, quit taking him away from us. We need him. Well, nah. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> maybe he not. Did, maybe not. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, listen, he's a serv serviceable MS MLS player, but he is nowhere near a top midfielder. Now, maybe there's this still infatuation from Greg that Yule is the only replacement for Acosta 
and uh, in case um, Adams gets hurt. So he's third on the CDM list. I'd be more inclined to put Richard push Richards up into a dis- defensive midfielder instead of having Ewell. Yeah, I mean, I would. <laughs> there are a number of options. I'd push McKinney back. He can play that six. Okay. Yes, but even in this camp, I mean, Alfredo Morales had a really good, decent season hmm. in MLS. Keaton Parks had another really good season. I Morales, Morales kind of got screwed over with the United States national team. Yeah, I mean, and his thing rough, is he's not career. not he's just a destroyer. That's what Alfredo yeah. Morales is, and that is not really a position we have on our team. Um, if you if you're a destroyer, you have to also be a distributor like Adams. You can't be just a destroyer. Well, I mean, this is kind of what uh, Acosta plays when he's a six. I mean, he's really he's really good at breaking up the plays moving forward, but then he has to play that the simple ball out because anything more created from that point is. Usually at a loss. Oh, I would definitely say Morales is a better distributor than Acosta. So so there's that right off the bat. And you don't go play as many years as <laughs> yeah. Morales did in the Bundesliga, in two Bundesliga, but a lot in the Bundesliga as a destroyer distributor, you know, if you're not any good at, at just doing the basic mm-hmm. passes. So it's just, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's this Jackson Ewell thing. It's just like a snuggle nut thing for Greg. That's all this is. It's pathetic, and I wish it would stop, but it's not going they're, to. Uh, they're, they're, they're Euchre partners. That's why I called them up. <laughs> Euchre <laughs> partners, yeah. And wait, not, wait, those... wait, wait, wait. Are either of them from the Midwest? I don't know. That actually that may have been a bad, uh, bad uh, joke there. Yeah, because there's a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people the fuck from. is Euchre? I didn't know anything about Euchre <laughs> until I moved to Indiana. I'd never even heard of the game before. So there's that. Um, all right. We play Jen Rummy. The rest of the world plays a lot of Rummy. Um, and so Euchre was like, Euchre, what the fuck's this? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you learn it. It's kind of fun. Um, it, takes like, it takes like two minutes to learn. Yeah. If you have half a brain, yeah. if you only had a brain, <laughs> which I feel like I don't right now. So I'm barely getting through this. Um, forwards. Paul Ariola, not surprising. Jesus Ferreira, not surprising. Jordan Morris, not surprising. Giassi's artist, not surprising. So that wraps that up, right? I mean, all those guys. Anybody in the Ford list uh, you think is missing? Oh, we didn't mention that uh, Christian Roldan still probably has a really good chance of making the January oh, yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Costa, Jackson Ewell, clearly. I don't, yeah, and Acosta. I don't, and Legette, not yeah. Bassett, not Ewell. Um, unless they do something spectacular and, you know, a firecracker goes off in Greg's ass during this, this camp. Um, Paul Ariola, I think he's got a chance at making the team. I hate saying it, but for me, I prefer, would prefer Jordan Morris being the guy off this list I think, that makes it. Yeah. And I think all four of these are in contention. I'm not saying they're all going to be included again. But they're all in contention for uh, for a, a spot on the January window. So who do you get rid of? You can't get rid of Polisic. You can't get rid of no, no. Again, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, both Ariel and Morris will be there as wing options. I'm saying that he might take Morris or he might take Ariel, or he could if, take both. It's possible. <laughs> if Way is still injured, or other guys get the Rona, yeah. I mean. I mean, I, and Gio's just coming back from injury, and he's getting healthy. So, I mean, it, it, the spots are opening, I guess. So, we yeah. might see both Ariel and Morris there. We might. I mean, I think those are the two more likely ones. I wouldn't put it past Greg for all of these guys to be on the team, frankly. Like to, uh, maybe bring back uh, Gio Accini? Did I say that right? <laughs> Gio Accini? Yeah, you, Gio you did. But Hey-o. <laughs> uh, since Gio Chini has moved to the first division in France, Greg's pretty much just said, uh, who? That's, who? That's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, he got more playing time at Ligue 2. <laughs> <Deux. Deux. Deux. laughs> now that he's in Ligue 1, uh, he's gotten no call-ups. So he moves to a better league. And granted, he only I, plays... Gets more, he gets more playing time, though. That's the funny thing. Well, he gets about the same. He's getting yeah. like the last 10, 15, whatever. But he's... Apparently, that's good enough when you're at Cayenne, but it's not mm-hmm. good enough when you move up one division and get the same amount of playing time. 
So I don't know what the fuck is going on there. I really don't. It's another one of those things that people will say, well, Greg knows better anyhow. He's got all that <laughs> coaching pedigree, and he was a former player, and you're just some stupid YouTuber. It's like, yeah, but I can still have an opinion. That's like saying that, you know, there's a guy, and he's called a philosopher, and he teaches philosophy at college, and he has one view of philosophy and he's a transcendentalist it doesn't make that doesn't make every individual who's an existentialist who isn't a philosophy major wrong you, you get where i'm going with that i mean can we stop doing this people the people used to criticize the fact that howard cosell used to call monday night football because he'd never played football in his life who fucking cares he knew the game yeah maybe not as good as some other people um, but he knew it well enough to call the game and make it entertaining. And he had good points. Um, except when he said things like the wet today, the rain today is very wet. And you're like, <laughs> you've been drinking too much, but you know, that dry um, rain. yeah, there's no dry rain. I don't know. Last I checked. <laughs> so I think that's going to do it. I rent for the yeah. call-ups and I think we went through all of the circumstances and all of that. And this show went, this, this segment went way longer than we thought. <laughs> all right. We'll be back with segment three. And until then, um, have a good blow. <laughs>